Hello and welcome back to Throttle Up. Now most of us know about Innova, Fortuner or the newly launched Urban Cruiser High Rider as part of the Toyota lineup. What most of us don't know is that there is also a pickup truck which Toyota recently launched in the Indian market which goes by the name of the Toyota Hilux. Now pickup trucks as a segment is not very prevalent in India itself and it's very prevalent in America or even other foreign countries. And as a result, there are only two options available when it comes to that segment, which is this, the Toyota Hilux and Isuzu V-Cross. The Toyota Hilux is available in two variants, namely Standard and High, which also makes me think that they did not use much creativity while naming these variants because as it suggests, the Standard is the base variant or the Standard variant and the High one is the top variant. The Hilux, irrespective of its variants, gets only one engine option, which is a 2.8 litre diesel. As for the transmissions, the high variant gets both manual and automatic whereas the standard one only gets a manual option. The 4x4 is a standard so any option you opt for, the 4x4 remains a standard so that's very nice and sort of essential for a pickup truck because all you need is that grunt and power from a car of this personality or character. Now the one we have today is the topmost you can go in the lineup which is the high 2.8 litre diesel automatic 4x4 obviously. Now without further ado, let's get straight into the engine bay. Now this 2.8 litre turbo diesel produces a maximum power of 204 PS with a maximum torque of 420 Nm in case it's mated to a 6 speed manual. In case of an automatic, it produces a 500 Nm figures which is amazing. Now for the bonnet, it does not get hydraulic struts which is a disappointment but it gets a lot of insulation to prevent cabin noise. The engine is properly neatly cladded with plastic so it looks neat. So coming to the front profile, it reminds me of the Land Cruiser, Fortuner and Innova all at the same time. So that's actually a compliment. A huge Toyota logo right at the center with this grey finish and this metallic grey bracket which looks so nice on this huge trapezoidal grille. It goes really well with the character of this pickup truck. You also get this chrome surrounds exclusive to the high variant which reminds me of the Land Cruiser and that grille is huge but it goes with the character of that car so I really like it. The front bumper is finished in body color and has this very low key skid plate design which I really like. It gets a front parking sensor but no front parking camera. So that's kind of a miss but nonetheless coming to the headlamps. They are so good looking. They are absolutely gorgeous and nothing you would expect from this rugged car because it feels so premium. It feels like a very Land Cruiser like headlamp design. Now this is how the headlamp looks when it's lit up. You get the LED DRL. You get the LED projector and those are LED turn indicators and there's nothing I would want more from this headlamp because they are gorgeous. I love this. Now you also get LED fog lamps which are finished in piano black surround and there's no air vent going through the bumper. It's just fake to give it a more sportier touch but there's no ventilation or to uh, improve aerodynamics so nothing of that sort. Now let's head to the side profile but before coming to the side profile, I love this front look. I love it. There is nothing I would want more. It also says Hilux right there on the headlamp itself. It's just perfect for a pickup truck and it's so Japanese. It's so Toyota bang on. Now as for the side profile, it is super duper. It's obnoxiously long with a length of 5325 mm and a wheelbase of 3085 mm. So it's super duper duper long. I don't even know how can someone navigate with this through a city but then again you might not be taking out this to a mall or any market it's for a different purpose but you get the idea now again a very pickup truckish side look but the alloys are huge they're conventional there's nothing which would throw you off and make you feel that this shouldn't belong to a pickup truck design so there's nothing of that sort it's absolutely perfect it gets the hilux badging on the front door which is finished in chrome Chrome is also used on the outside rear view mirrors as well but there is no puddle lamp or any blind spot camera offered. The turn indicators are also LED. Now this black and silver garnish on the doors that you see is part of an accessory kit so you wouldn't get this. This is a demo car and that's why it's here but you would have to get it installed. You get this chrome sill as a standard on the high variant. The sun visors are also part of an accessory kit. The antenna is not a shark fin antenna, it's right at the front. So I don't know why they haven't given a shark fin antenna but now coming to the wheel, the wheel size is humongous, it's an 18 incher, this design will remind you of the normal regular Fortuner, the alloy design specifically. Now the tire profile of this is 265-60 R18 which seems to be adequate for this huge muscular car. 
It also gets a side step which is definitely required since it takes a lot of effort to get into the car. It's very tall. Now this is again part of an accessory kit. This is what Toyota calls stylish bar. It looks really nice so you can actually get it installed. I like this accessory. As part of an accessory it also gets this matte black carbon black finish on the top of that uh, trunk. Otherwise it's all finished in body color. Now let's head to the back rear profile of the car. It is as interesting as it was at the front. Nothing feels out of place. It's exactly how a pickup truck should look like. So I'm very impressed. There is Toyota badging and Toyota written so many times on the rear of this car that you couldn't miss it even if you wanted to. There's Toyota written there. There's Toyota written on the tailgate. There's Toyota badging in Chrome as well. As you can see, so many, many Toyotas. Toyota, Toyota and obviously Hilux badging as well. It gets the stop lamp. It gets the opener which is finished in chrome there's a place to actually step into that cargo space it can literally carry tons of payload and this is also finished in chrome which also carries the rear parking sensors now this is for the tail lamp it feels like an inverted b or actually an e only so this is how it looks like when it's lit up all led treatment for the tail lamp but not for the turn indicators and the reverse lights because those are finished in halogen that's the turn indicator that's the reverse light they could have given everything in LED just like they have given in the front but they haven't so that's sad. Now the fifth wheel is at the bottom and the real exhaust is at the right. It's just a singular real exhaust and there's no fake exhaust treatment going on whatsoever because that wouldn't fit the personality of this car. Now let's open this. Now as an accessory there are hydraulic struts to make it open or close very softly the tailgate but it does not come as a standard but it's a highly recommended accessory honestly huge huge space you can go out on a trip have an entire picnic there buy a freaking shop while you're on that picnic and store entire inventory in this cargo space that is how big it is there is absolutely no shortage of boot space like even th this is not even a boot this is an open space for your cargo so and you can obviously install accessories to cover it with a tent of sorts so again it is a proper multi-utility vehicle I love the rear, I love the overall exterior of this car. It just doesn't disappoint by any means when it comes to the overall design of a pickup truck. So very on point. Now let's head to the interior. The doors are really heavy. The finish on the inside is very dark because most of it is in black but nonetheless you get a mix of soft plastics, leather and hard plastics on that door pad. So this is finished in leather, this is hard plastic. This is a softer plastic actually. It's still plastic but very soft. This is a chrome lining which I really like. It's actually silver garnish actually. It's not chrome per se. This is leather with white stays. This is hard plastic. A very good bottle holder. It's very nicely sized and shaped. That speaker design will remind you of the Fortuner and even the Innova. All the four windows are auto up and down. So that's really nice. This is a chrome finish door handle which is very nice to use. Now let's get into the back seat but in order to get into the back seat you have to use the side step and this handle to actually grab onto it and then apply a lot of effort to actually pull yourself into the car. Shorter people would actually have a lot of problem and a hassle getting into the Toyota Hilux. Now this is how the dashboard looks like from the back seat. It's very Toyota-ish and might remind you of the Fortuner and the Innova also. Some elements are from Fortuner, some are from Toyota. That wavy dashboard is definitely from an Innova. Now let's look at the leg space and the thigh support overall. I'll move to the co-driver side because this driver side is pushed at the back. So I wouldn't be able to show you the real picture of the space that is provided. It is decent. Just about enough because the co-driver seat is also set for a person like me only. So not a lot of leg room per se. The thigh support is still adequate. My entire thigh is supported. I am very comfortable. The recline angle is also decent. It's kind of on the upright side but and also you cannot adjust it so that's kind of a miss. You do get three adjustable headrests. All the three of them are adjustable which is nice. There is a center armrest which is also has two cup holders which are finished inside the armrest itself. Unlike the Innova and the Toyota where you have to pop out the cup, cup holders. I like this design actually more than the Fortuner and the Innova. You get fixed grab handles which are not soft pull or push. So I don't know I feel that those were better. Now for the other features you get AC vents which are finished in the silver garnish so I like that. Again very decent plastic. It, the AC vents are kind of on the smaller side and it's so dark my camera has given up on me. Now I'll have to open the flash. Yeah so there are no 
sockets of any kind no usb no type c nothing it's just ac vents you also get a hook to secure your stuff and you get magazine holders on both the sides the maximum capacity of this hook is 4 kg the hump is also very tall and it eats up a lot of space for the middle passenger so even the middle passenger wouldn't be that comfortable as you can see there is not much space on offer because the most of it apparently has gone in the cargo space so just about enough for the two people at the back it's not some place very comfortable or very cushy it's just about enough nothing too extraordinary but not to say that this is not comfortable these are comfortable the cushioning is nice the thigh support is very nice just like the Toyotas you couldn't complain about the comfort in a Toyota so that's that now coming to the front doors very similar treatment to what we had in the back door itself now you get a portal holder which is really big I like the space that they have given there now so this is silver finish this is soft plastic this is leather and that's the hard plastic the bottle holders is adequately sized you also get this red lamp of sorts to provide illumination in the dark there's a gloss back finish where the controls are placed now you get auto foldable orvms electrical adjustment for the outside rear mirrors door lock and lock button window lock buttons and all the four power windows are auto up and down so that's really nice you get electrical adjustment for the driver's side seat which is again a nice touch it's exclusive to the high variant of the toyota hilux now this is to adjust the height we can obviously adjust the position of it and the backrest through the lever at the back since this is an automatic you get two levers and a huge dead pedal at the left so there is no shortage of space whatsoever again so dark i have to switch on the flash these are the levers for your fuel lid opener and the bonnet opener now the buttons on the top are for your parking sensors and the washer button so no other buttons as such that's the engine start stop button which obviously you get in this car now there's also a cup holder finished just below the ac vent and this is the ac vent which has a chrome surround running through it before heading into the cockpit this is how the key fob looks like i know it's in a bag because it's a showroom car but nonetheless chrome finish piano black finish hilux right there on the other side and door lock and lock buttons with the toyota badging very chunky very nice key fob which again i expect from a toyota it also says toyota on the door sale as well so many toyotas written in the same car i am done there are so many toyotas i am not saying this is a maruti <coughs> yes this is not a maruti because even the plastics are very different as to what they normally use so that's really nice now this is the instrument cluster which greets you it is so damn good i love the instrument cluster on this it's very similar to what we have in the fortuner but i love the dials they have this 3d effect the tachometers on the left the speedometers on the right the warning lights are some of it is in the mid some of them are in the space between those dials i love it i just love it now in order to control the MID you would have to use the buttons which are on the right of the steering wheel. You get information like your odometer, the current average that you are getting, uh, the FM stations as well. This is for the engine setting. In order to use the settings you have to select OK on the steering wheel. You can customize the meter as to how it looks, the language, the units, the kilometer, miles, whatever you want to. Drive info, how would, do you want it to get displayed, the color, the eco saving mode and to initialize the overall display of the MID so a lot of features very neat very clean like forget the MID I know it's nice but the tiles are so damn good looking very nice now this is the steering wheel which greets you proper leather finish with white stretching you can obviously adjust it for tilt and telescopic so this is the tilt and that's the telescopic the lever is placed right in the center below as you can see so it's it's convenient to use no problems whatsoever love how chunky the steering is the left controls are for the infotainment and to hang up or pick up the call the right is for to control the mid you get this silver finish as the third spoke so i really like that this stock that you see on the right below is for your cruise control conventional stock on the left for your wipers and on the right is your headlamp stock you also get auto headlamps in the toyota hilux as well now let's talk about the overall dashboard I don't think there would be anyone on this planet who would look at this dashboard and say that this is not from a Toyota. As simple as that. It's not identical to Fortuner or Innova. It is different. But just look at the clock, the different orderly placed touchscreen, that tall dashboard. 
Anyone who knows a thing or two about cars can just look at it and say that it's a Toyota dashboard. Now this is finished in soft plastic. It has a chrome line running across the dashboard. It gets a twin glove box treatment. The bottom one also gets a lock feature but we'll come to that in just a bit. The AC vents have this boomerang curvy sort of design which is again something that we have seen in the previous Toyota cars. So an out and out Toyota dashboard with silver, black, matte black, piano black and everything going on. It gets this iconic Toyota clock. I'm going to call this an icon because it seems like it. Every single Toyota car gets this. The AC vents, however, are very inconspicuous. I like that. They are not in your face, which I always appreciate in any car. Now, as for the touch screen, this is the same unit which you get in the Fortuner or the top variants of the Innova. Has proper physical tactical buttons to control the volume, to go to the channels, change the tracks, change, go to the home. So it gets the buttons and even the rotary dials to adjust the volume and the power. Very responsive touchscreen overall. This is how you go to the menu. You can change the themes. This is the black red theme because it goes with the overall feel of the car. Now you can change it to the blue white theme which you get in the Innova or the Fortuner. It is an 8 inch touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support as well. Gets a Toyota Park Assist, Smart Link apps connectivity. If you want to check out the detailed information about this touchscreen, you can look at the Fortuner and the Innova reviews that I've done. Now this is what I meant when I said that this is oddly placed because it's literally hanging from that dashboard. The overall fit and finish is nice, it's piano black. I love the touchscreen but why not give it on the top as a floating treatment instead of that clock that they have provided on the top and just have left that touchscreen hanging there. I just don't like the placement of the touchscreen in this Hilux. Down below, the knob that you see on the extreme right is to adjust the four-wheel drive settings. So high, low, high, high two, high four, low four. These are for your AC air conditioning controls. It gets the dual zone climate control. So that's really nice in order to set a different temperature and fan speed for the rear AC vents. But there's obviously auto climate control as well. This is to control the traction control. That's for the differential lock and that's for downhill assist. This I have to switch on the flash again. Now that's the 12 volt socket, USB socket, there's no type C on offer and but there are some dummy buttons which they have provided. There are actually two 12 volt sockets. They could have actually given a type C instead of the second 12 volt socket. There's some space to keep your stuff. Two cup holders which are not attached which is very peculiar. Some space to keep your key or even a phone. The phone wouldn't fit there but the key definitely would. Manual handbrake finishing plastic, there's no electric parking brake which is a big miss now this is the gear knob finished in chrome leather with piano black at the base which is finished in silver around that piano black i really love that treatment now this is the chrome leather very nice to hold eco button at the top and the pwr button that you see is to change the gear shift points since this is an automatic transmission no electric parking brake this is a 40 lakh rupees car why not why is this a manual handbrake but nonetheless, this is some space to keep your key or some stuff and that's the center console armrest which I've just opened. Has decent depth, is finished in plastic and it gets a 100 volt, prop, 100 watt actually, proper socket. You can just plug in your laptops or your phones and charge it properly just like you do in your homes. So that is something I'm seeing maybe for the first time in a car. Now heading to the other spaces that where you can keep your stuff. It gets two glove boxes. This is the upper one. It also gets the cool function. You can see the vents on the left side. It gets a very flat bottom so you can keep your documents very easily. And it's very easy to reach out to. This is the bottom glove box which has very less space so to say. and But it gets the locking function so you can secure your valuables inside that and just lock it. The co-driver sun visor gets a vanity mirror but there's no lamp. It gets this sort of uh, space to maybe keep your tickets or something like that but yeah there's no lamp as such. That lid has a very weird cut of sorts but there's no vanity mirror on the driver side sun visor but again you can't complain because many brands do not give that. Now it gets a sunglass holder which is very conventional nothing fancy or extraordinary about it. There's cabin lamp which is finished in halogen, so no LED treatment like you get in the Fortuner. So there's proper yellow halogens. Now if I talk about the illumination inside the cabin, the even the center lamp, it's not actually center, it's very much in the front. So there's no cabin lamp for the back two seats, which is rather wrong because it's already a very dark cabin. Now 
let's talk about the seat seat has very nice cushioning is finished in proper black leather there's very minimal use of white stitching but again it's a very dark interior with all so many blacks it does get the auto dimming function for the inside rear view mirror so that's that now in terms of safety you get seven airbags Rear parking camera, front parking camera, hill assist, downhill assist, electronic differential locking, limited slip differential which is automatic actually, downhill assist, active traction control, so tons of features. Now these grab handles that you see are to make getting in easier but it's still a hassle. Now the biggest problem that I have is it misses on, on a 360 parking camera. It's a really, really, really long and wide car. I cannot stress this enough. And missing out on a 360 parking camera would create huge troubles for the driver because it will be very difficult to navigate across the city or even in tight spaces if you are driving it on a hilly road because there is a shortage of space there. So 360 camera is a big, big miss in a car of this dimension. Even though it gets a rear parking camera, it does not get a 360 functionality. A few cameras here and then would have solved the purpose but then Toyota somehow decided not to give that which would definitely create problems and you are spending 40 lakhs, you actually deserve it. Now for the overall Toyota Hilux review. The first thing is that it has only one direct competitor which is the Isuzu V-Cross. Now I don't think it would take Sherlock Holmes to decode why Toyota Hilux would definitely be a win in this segment over the Isuzu because Isuzu has not been able to make much of an impact in the Indian market while Toyota has killed it, literally killed it when it comes to multi-utility vehicles, multi-purpose vehicles and the SUVs like the Fortuner in the Indian market. So the Hilux, if you are actually in the market for a pickup truck, would definitely be the one to go for. Now as for the pricing, the standard manual comes at an X showroom of 34 lakhs X showroom. Whereas the high variant manual comes at an X showroom of 35.8 lakhs. Whereas this one, the topmost automatic version of the high variant comes at an X showroom of 36.8 lakhs. So that is quite a jump. Even if you are going for the same variant, you would have to spend 1 lakh rupees extra for the automatic one. Now, even though this is a better car and it's a benchmark in reliability and it has this Toyota badge. Now the Isuzu V-Cross is around 12 to 13 lakhs cheaper. The top end 4x4 automatic of the V-Cross would cost you around 24.5 lakhs X showroom which is quite a leap. It would It is almost a difference of 12 to 13 lakhs rupees in X showroom itself let alone the cost of insurance and the registration that you would have to pay on top of that. But let's forget about the price for one second and see how Hilux compares to the V-Cross overall. It is definitely a winner. It looks better, it has a more powerful engine, it has a better stance, it has more features and nothing against Isuzu but this is a Toyota and you cannot take away that fact. The Hilux would definitely appeal to a very niche segment of customers because at this price point the masses would definitely go for an Innova or the Fortuner and that would be a very practical decision to make. But someone needed the answer to Isuzu and who better than Toyota could have answered with a very reliable engine and amazingly good looking exterior with all the features that you would need and expect. And although this segment particularly signifies functionality over form and you wouldn't actually care about style or features when you are buying a pickup truck, but this car has it all. It has the form, it has the functionality, it has all those alloys and chrome, everything going on with a strong engine which would take you places and places which you wouldn't even think of taking any other car. So that was my take on the new Toyota Hilux. Let me know in the comments what you think about this pickup truck and whether would you consider one over a Fortuner or an Innova in case of very special circumstances. Speaking of special circumstances, let me know what circumstance do you think would one actually want to consider buying a pickup truck and not a huge full-size SUV. So do comment below about that and what do you think. Do not forget to like the video if you liked the review and also to help the algorithm. Subscribe to our channel for more such reviews and walk around videos. We will soon be coming with drive reviews as well. So do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Keep watching Throttle Up.